While Thor might not be known for his children in the world of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, when it comes to the Marvel multiverse from the comics, there are actually quite a few of his offspring running around. Just how powerful are they? Let's find out. Welcome back, Nerd Squad. I'm your host, Amanda McKnight, and this is Top 10 Nerd. Today, we'll be counting down the top 10 most powerful children of Thor. Join me and let's soar into it. Number 10, Amora and Thor hybrid clones. One of the only children if you want to call them that, that Thor actually has in the main continuity were actually genetically engineered by a man named Price, who was a scientist, a mad scientist, I would say. A scientist who ate one too many mushrooms and then had a vision of Yggdrasil. Because of his vision, he believed that after Ragnarok, a new superior race of beings would come into existence and after getting genetic samples from both Amora and Thor, created clones of those two people together, who for some reason were all male, but anyways. They had no individual names, but were simply known as Price's clones. He created them to help him build the world engine, which would usher in the new superior race meant to come into existence following Ragnarok, as per Price's vision. There is also a lot of romantic tension in this story between Thor and Amora, where they both end up confronting Price and his creations. Also, all of them are bald, which I feel like if they're Thor and Amora clones, I feel like they should have lots of hair in my mind. Both of those people got lots of hair. Number nine, Modi the Angry. This Modi is the son of a past version of Thor, so not the Thor that we know from 616, but technically this Modi would be from 616. He is one of the few survivors of a past Ragnarok event. The Eye of Odin tells main continuity Thor about this tale, showing him the Ragnarok that had happened and a past version of Thor's place in it. While this past version of Thor died in a fight against the serpent, he was survived by his two sons, one of which was Modi. We don't know much about Modi, we don't even seem to know who his mother was. Technically Modi is the son of a past Thor, but all versions of Thor's children are welcome on this list, so that's why we can count them. Especially as in the main continuity, Thor, like I said, doesn't really have kids. Not even in the comics. A lot of them are alt kids from alternate realities. Modi has bright red hair and seems to be armed with daggers. While we don't know much, we do know he was strong enough to survive Ragnarok, which completely ravaged the nether realms. And that's pretty impressive. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you are loving our channel, please head on over to our Facebook page where you can also show us your love by clicking that like and clicking that follow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Number eight, Magni the Stronger. This Magni is another son of Pastor who also makes his first appearance alongside his brother Modi in the original Thor series in issue 293. Where Modi is known as the Angry, Magni is known as the Strong. Throughout the various alternate universes we've seen, Magni would become a more preferred name as well for Thor's potential children. Well, one of the preferred names. There's a couple. Whether it be a past version of Thor or possibly a future version of Thor, Magni is a name that we will see again. Like Modi, Magni also is one of the few to survive Ragnarok, despite the destruction of the nether realms, which as I said is pretty dang impressive because yeah, Ragnarok usually kills everybody. Also Magni and Modi both proved together in the following issue that they are both strong enough of will to resist the temptation to use their father's hammer Mjolnir to rule over the other surviving as guardians, and that they are strong enough of might to hurl it away from them all the way through space and down to Midgard with a single mighty toss. It's a joint toss, but still, that, that's pretty impressive to me. That's a far throw. Number seven, Torin Thor's daughter. Torin Thor's daughter is the daughter of Sif and Thor, who hails from the alternate future that we see in the animated series Next Avengers Heroes of Tomorrow. In this reality, Torin and the other young surviving heroes were kept safe by Iron Man and aided additionally by Hulk and Vision when it came to their battles and their training as young Young heroes, young Avengers, not young Avengers though, next Avengers. Young Avengers is a different thing. Torin was basically sent to Midgard by her parents to learn the same lesson that Odin had sought to teach Thor by sending him away. She has all the powers of an Asgardian, being the daughter of Thor and Sif, and also seems to have lightning and thunder powers similar to her father. Number six, Thena Thor's daughter. Thena hails from the MC2 reality of Earth 982. Here, Thena is the daughter of Thor, although mysteriously, we do not know who her mother is, which seems to be a 
recurring theme in a lot of Thor's kids. She ends up chasing down her cousin Silene, daughter of Loki, to attempt to stop her evil plot from succeeding and to rescue Kevin Masterson, son of Thunderstrike, aka Eric Masterson, whom Silene had kidnapped. In the process, she runs into the new Avengers, also known via the comics as the Avengers Next Team, after a quick fight due to a misunderstanding. Athena would join with the Avengers, continuing to pursue Silene and successfully defeating her and rescuing Kevin in the end with their help. Athena is similar to Torin in terms of her capabilities, but is more experienced, so she ranks a little higher for that reason. At least she seems more experienced to me. It's my opinion. Number five, Torin Thor's daughter. There are a few different Torin Thor's daughters out there, but this one comes from the comics, just to be clear, so not from the animated series. In another alternate future, she is a member of the next Avengers. She makes her first appearance in Generations Iron Man and Ironheart issue number one, and hails from the same reality where in the future of 2099, Iron Man would actually go on to become the Sorcerer Supreme. We know that Thor is Torin's father, but do not explicitly know who her mother is. Once again, mysteries abound. Although if this Torrin is similar to the Torrin from the next Avengers animated series, then her mother is likely Sif. This Torrin appears older to me, and for that reason she makes a little bit higher than her animated version and a little bit higher than the MC2 Thena. Although she likely isn't as popular or well known among Thor fans as her animated counterpart. I would assume, I don't know. If you know this Torrin better, you can let me know in the comments. Number four, Modi. This is the Modi we talk about normally when we mention that name in conjunction with Thor's. He is the son of Thor and Hela, who in the reality of Earth 1610, also known as the Ultimate Universe, which he hails from, were not uncle and niece as they are in the main continuity of Earth 616 in the comics, and were not brother and sister either as they are known to be in the MCU reality of Earth 199999. Sometimes referred to cinematically as Earth 616, which is super confusing for us because, you know, 616 is the main comic book continuity, so what are we doing with that? Thor made a deal with Hela to give her a child so that he might once more return to Valkyrie's side on Earth. Eventually, he would be allowed to return to Earth, but only after Valkyrie had died. Modi was the son that would be born from this deal and would be gifted in magics and was capable of teleportation. He was also able to wield Mjolnir. Instead of being a hero like most of Thor's alt-reality kids, Modi tends to be... Um, more villain in the 1610 universe. Must be Hela's influence. Number three, Woden Thorson. Woden Thorson is the son of Thor and Sif from the 31st century. And this alternate take on the future appearing in Guardians of the Galaxy and known as Earth 691, Woden would suffer initially from having an absent father. Thor could basically not give up adventuring, leaving Sif mainly alone to parent their son. It wasn't until Thor was forced to stay home by Odin that Woden became a potential heroic figure. Learning from his father and actually taking pride in his heritage and his people as he learned more about them from Thor. Although why Sif wasn't able to instill this in Woden herself, also being a warrior from Asgard, I'm not really sure. But hey, sometimes I guess you just need your dad around, you know? That's fine. Thor would spend more and more time at the Mead Hall, prompting Woden to leave home. However, he would later return after Loki and his inhuman army had taken over, and he returned to fight against his evil uncle. Loki would be defeated by Woden, who wielded Mjolnir in the battle, as while his father was no longer worthy to lift the hammer, Woden was. Number two, Magni. This Magni is typically the one that we talk about when we are talking about the son of Thor, Magni. So usually when people say that, they're talking about this one. Like I said, there's a lot of repeating of names when it comes to alternate kids. It's great. It's a little confusing, but it's great. He hails from the alternate future reality of Earth 3515, which was erased from existence at the behest kind of of Magni. The future Allfather Thor, who had Magni with his queen Amora, the Enchantress, ended up traveling back in time to warn his past self about everything that would come to pass should he rule over Midgard, which is also something that happened in this future and sent Thor down a pretty dark path. Thor of the present listened to the warning of his future self and heeded it, preventing this Magni from ever really existing. When he did exist though, Magni was considered to be similar to Thor in his abilities, but he was also believed to be even stronger physically than Thor had been, being known as the God of Strength. Magni was also capable of wielding Mjolnir in his lifetime. His short lifetime. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> Number one, Starbrand. While not a child of his or Iron Man's loins, Brandy Selby became the adopted God daughter of Thor in issue 32 of the 2018 Avengers series. He promised to take care of her after the Avengers, as he saw it, 
failed her mother, who died in childbirth. Thor especially felt bad as he had succumbed to being possessed by the brood at that time, and really wasn't much help to the team when they came across the previous star brand, Suzanne, Brandy's mother, who went into labor. She gave birth to a healthy baby girl, but didn't survive the delivery herself. She passed on her star brand to her unnamed baby as she died, who was later named Brandy by the Avengers, who basically took Brandy in and kind of like did their best to raise her, Thor included. Kind of, I think, a pretty fun story. Lately, she has gone through a dramatic age up in the comics, which has also seen her come more into her own when it comes to controlling her power and tapping into its full potential. And if you didn't know, the star brand is pretty amazingly powerful when we're talking about cosmic power forces. It's pretty nuts. A lot Brandy could do with that for sure. A lot of harm, a lot of good, a lot of stuff. Who are your favorite of Thor's children? Which do you think are the most powerful and why? I personally am particularly fond of his granddaughters from the Jason Aaron alternate future reality where he becomes all father, which weren't on this list, but hey, you know, maybe on a part two. But you can let me know your thoughts in the comments below when it comes to some of your favorites and who you think is the most powerful. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I'm your host Amanda McKnight. Till next time, take care of you and stay nerdy YouTube.